What is the oldest measurement we know of? Is there anything from prehistory which could teach us about the way people were thinking? Although people may come up with the same ideas simultaneously at different places on Earth, they cannot come up with exactly the same measurement system without communication. So how old is the oldest measurement system we know of? What can it tell us about the way prehistoric people were thinking and acting? I've decided to do today's video because I've made an incredible discovery which could change history. When did people first start measuring things? Was it for commercial reasons, weighing grain or measuring cloth? Or did it start much earlier in the construction of ancient monuments? Is it possible to imagine that complex megalithic structures like those at Gobekli Tepe could have been built without planning and predetermined measurements? If prehistoric people were using measurement systems, what were they based on? And how were they determined? In 1955, nearly 70 years ago, Alexander Tom, an engineering professor from Oxford University, presented the results of many years of studies in the megalithic monuments in the British Isles. His conclusion was that the megalithic builders had been using a same measure all over the British Isles, which he called the megalithic yard. His findings were validated by the Royal Society of Statisticians. This discovery was going to shake the foundations of the archaeological narrative of the first peasant farmers building ritual monuments. It could be called the Atom Bomb. Professor Tom's findings demonstrated the use of a measurement of 0 0.829 meters or 2.72 feet. Although he was not a hippie fringe theorist, archaeologists could not accept his conclusions, but neither could they disprove them. In 1970, the BBC made a documentary about Professor Tom's work called Cracking the Stone Age Code. His methods were clearly explained but leading archaeologists of the time who were interviewed just simply said that it could not be true. That, I question how much of the prehistoric Einstein's calculations have been put in by Professor Tom. Uh, where people are going to have difficulties with the implications of these studies. And if we accept implications, admittedly we're accepting something which to us as archaeologists, sounds pretty improbable. But the BBC took Professor Tom to the Karnak alignments in Brittany, and over a three-week period, he demonstrated the use of his megalithic yard in the construction of these enigmatic monuments. He even affined it to 0 0.8294 metres. This discovery in Karnak seemed to clinch the validity of his research. However, over the years, Professor Tom's painstaking work has been pushed into oblivion by mainstream archaeology, whilst being developed by people who are called pseudoscientists. This label is meant to suggest that anything these people say is untrue and ridiculous. Despite the opposition, Proof has been building up that the megalithic yard truly existed. And recently, I discovered that it was actually engraved on a stone. 
This engraving is on a vertical pillar at the entrance to the chamber of the Kerke do Dolmen in Karnak, considered to be one of the oldest monuments in the area. This stone was meticulously prepared to have a perfectly flat surface so it could be used as a precise tablet. On this surface is a vertically orientated engraving composed of seven rectangles placed one above the other. The rectangles are wider at the base of the form than at the top. The uppermost line of this engraving is slightly curved, which will be seen to be very important. If we now examine the middle section, the upper and lower lines are curved, forming a convex shape in the center of the septuple square. The bottom line is slightly inclined. The left-hand side of the engraving measures exactly 0.829 meters, one megalithic yard as discovered by Professor Tom. The diagonal of the shape measured from the bottom right corner also measures exactly the same length as the upper line is curved, this measurement can also be found on the right-hand side going up to the end of the curve. There is a lot of other important information engraved on this stone, which is beyond the scope of this present video. The division of this measurement into seven parts is extremely interesting and important. It's a well-known fact that the Egyptians divided their royal Egyptian cubit into seven palms. Each palm was then divided into four digits or fingers, as shown on the rod. On the Gate of the Sun in Tiwanaku in Bolivia, the central sun god is holding two rods, one in each hand, and each rod is divided into seven parts. The figure is holding the central part of each rod, and his fingers divide it into four as with the Egyptian cubit. The division into seven is well known in other fields, like the seven colors of the rainbow, the seven notes in the octave, and the seven days of the week. Four astounding facts will confirm the importance of this discovery and prove the reality of its existence. The first is the link between the stone on which we find the engraving in the heart of the Kerkodo tumulus and the largest standing stone in Karnak, which is called the Manio. If we go down through the Karnak alignments to the Kerkodo cairn, Right in the center of that cairn is a standing stone which is just above the chamber. We can make out the entrance that leads to this chamber. We put a point on this stone and from that point we can move up through the countryside, across the Karnak alignments here and up to the giant Manio standing stone which is to be found on the hill on the other side of the alignments. We can see the base of the standing stone and its shadow, which is pointing north, going up towards the top of the screen. We see in the Google Earth measuring box that the angle from the Kerkado chamber reads 351.87 degrees. This is measured from north. So we'll type that result into the calculator and we'll take the tangent of that and see that we obtain a result of 0 0.14285. And if we take the inverse of that, we get seven. The geometry which links these two stones is an exact seven-fold square orientated on the cardinal directions. And each square measures 150 megalithic yards. 
Now we must look at the link between the Manio giant and the large recumbent stone which is lying in the middle of the Care Mario alignments in Karnak. In previous work, I have shown how this particular stone is central to the whole organization of the Care Mario alignments. And even on a much larger scale. So, if we zoom down onto this stone and we place a marker here, we're going to measure the exact distance and angle from this particular stone up to the Manio giant stone. We move to the north of the Kermario alignment and up the hill, where we come again to the base of this giant stone, the biggest standing stone in Karnak. So, if we draw the line exactly to the base, we can see that we have an angle of 45.00 degrees from north and a measurement of 1,173 meters. This can be seen to be very precise. 1,173 meters is equal to 1,414.2 megalithic yards. This number is exactly 1,000 times the square root of 2. So the sides of this square, oriented on the cardinal directions, measure exactly 1,000 megalithic yards. The largest standing stone ever erected on Earth is the Grand Menhir Brisé in the nearby town of Loc Mariaquer. Between the engraved stone and the base of the Grand Menhir is the distance of 8,294 meters, exactly 10,000 megalithic yards. But the most incredible, almost unbelievable, expression of the megalithic yard is to be found in the British Isles. And it links the world-famous monument of Stonehenge to the most northerly point of the British Isles. So if we go into the latitude, the exact latitude of Stonehenge, and then we move out towards the island of Lundy in the Bristol Channel. So this island is exactly on the same latitude as Stonehenge. And if we go to the specific point, which is precisely at the latitude of the centre of Stonehenge, and from here we measure the distance up to the most northerly point of the British Isles, right at the tip, of northwest Scotland at a place called Cape Roth, we will find the incredible distance of 829,440 meters, which is exactly one million megalithic yards. Could this be a coincidence? To finish this video, we're going to go to Egypt and take a look at the Great Pyramid's position. What we can discover is that inside the Great Pyramid, the King's Chamber has been slightly offset to the south. If we look at the plan, we can see that the distance is about 13.4 meters. So I've placed the position of the King's Chamber on the pyramid and we're going to measure the distance from the King's Chamber to the equator. This measurement was suggested to me 
by a friend of mine in France. This line will take us all the way down the Nile Valley, through the whole of Egypt, and then down into Africa, and right down to the source of the Nile on the parallel of Lake Victoria. We see that it gives a distance of 3,317,768 meters. You can see that the angle is 180.00 degrees, so it's a perfect north-south line. We're going to type this into the calculator and we're going to discover something quite outstanding. We're going to divide this distance by 4 million. This will give us the result of 0 0.829442. This means there are four million megalithic yards between the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid and the Equator. The initial definition of the meter was given as the 40 millionth part of the Earth's meridian. Now we discover here that the megalithic yard is the four millionth part of the distance between the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid and the Equator. Is there any link between the megalithic yard and the meter? Well, in fact, there is. If we take 2 to the power of 10 and we multiply it by 3 to the power of 4, this will give us the result of 82944. These are what are called Pythagorean canonical numbers, based purely on the powers of 2 and 3. They were very important in the ancient science of quadrivium. So we see that the megalithic yard has a direct numerical relationship with the meter itself. Could this measurement have been preserved in a clearer way? It has survived over 7,000 years of turbulent history and it is telling us a message that we should listen to. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please like and subscribe by clicking on the link just here on my photo. And you can share the links, of course, with all your friends so that more people can understand the beauty of this forgotten knowledge which seems to have disappeared from our planet. Bye-bye.